Hey everybody, Dr. Robert Pate, licensed clinical psychologist and marriage counselor. I want to talk with you today about the cost of your relationship. One of my favorite movies of all time is Ocean's Eleven. Great movie, a lot of great dialogue, interesting plot. Um, but one of my favorite parts of this film is toward the end. So spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, going to give away a little bit here. But uh, I think it makes a, a good point here that's worth considering, especially if you are in a difficult spot in your relationship. So what happens here in this film is toward the end of the movie, there's a casino owner who has just been robbed of a significant sum of money, over $100 million. So certainly nothing to sneeze at, even if you're a casino owner, right? So we'd all like to have that $100 million back. So he's presented with a choice, an opportunity, and he's told that if he is willing to give up his relationship, his romantic relationship to be specific, then a person will work on getting his money back for him. Now, he doesn't know it at the time, but this romantic partner is watching on closed-circuit television because in his hotel, as he says, there's always someone watching. So he doesn't think about this, and he goes ahead and answers the question honestly, thinking that he's by himself, and he says, you know what, I would say yes. I would say, go ahead, you can have my girlfriend, I want my money back, I want my $100 million. So the girlfriend, as we would probably expect, goes ahead and leaves, because what did she learn? She learned that... I am not priceless to you. I have a cost, and even if that cost is $100 million, there is a price on my head, and I am not a priceless, valuable thing to you. There is now a cost on me. So why do I bring that up? It's a great movie, interesting moment. You know, it's kind of a fun moment, a gotcha moment, if you will, against the casino owner. But the problem here is that we all do that in our relationships if we get to a certain point. So you may be watching this and you're in a difficult relationship. Maybe you're in a marriage that's gone south. Maybe there was uh, some infidelity. Maybe there was just a, a long series of in incidents that led to mistrust or just really not being close to each other anymore, intimate in that emotional kind of way. Whatever the reason is, you're watching this today and you may be at that point where you've started to put a price on your relationship. So I want to talk to you today about the cost of both saving and not saving your relationship. So first off, let me take this perspective of not saving your relationship. What's that going to cost you? So if you guys are buddy-buddy, if you're best pals, and for some reason it's just not working out, you're in good shape, your divorce is probably only going to cost you a few hundred bucks on LegalZoom. Great news, right? Now, chances are good, though, if you're getting divorced, maybe not on the best terms with each other. Maybe there's some conflict here. And Forbes released some information in 2006, so a decade ago. You can imagine how much more it might be today. But a decade ago, Forbes released information saying that the average contested divorce, only spending two days in court, was going to cost the consumer an average of fifteen to $30,000. Okay, so just think about that as a potential cost of not saving your relationship. Now, let's say that you go ahead and decide, I'd like to save this relationship. I'd like to put in the time. I'd like to pay the cost, whatever it is. This person is not like in Ocean's Eleven. This person has no cost to me. I'm willing to do what it takes. Okay, so that's great. You're all in. You're bought in. So you decide, you know what? Maybe one of those costs is I have to go talk to a counselor. Maybe that wasn't top of your priority list. So you're going to go talk to a marriage counselor. And you start looking around and you say, oh, boy, this is potentially going to be a little pricey here. And yeah, a marriage counselor is probably going to cost you, at least in a private practice setting, 100 to maybe $300 an hour. Now, that feels like a lot now, but I want you to think long-term perspective here. In 10, 20, 40 years, whatever anniversary you guys are celebrating at that point, are you going to think about, you know, boy, you know, that marriage counselor that we went to, they, they cost $30 an hour more than that other person we were thinking of. You know, I really wish we hadn't done that. No, because your relationship survived. It, it's thriving now. You made it to your 40th anniversary. That's what you're going to be focused on. So I want you to think about that perspective when you're considering who to go to. And I don't want you to be thinking about the cost of your relationship in that sense. So what should you be looking for in a counselor? Well, you know, you want to find somebody that's a good fit for you. So then you have to think, 
how do I find that person? So what I would recommend that you do is, you know, start like most of us do and we're going to spend money on anything. We go and Google that thing or you're probably not going to find a therapist on Amazon, but, you know, go on psychologytoday.com. Uh, you know, Google therapists in your zip code or your area or your city. Uh, goodtherapy.org. I mean, just there are lots of ways to get a start. But I would say, go ahead and click through to the websites. Read whatever you can get your hands on that they've written. Blogs, articles, content on their website. Um, if there are videos that you can watch to get a sense for their personality and what's it going to be like to come and talk to this person about things that really probably aren't that comfortable to talk about. Do they feel safe and like you can trust them with your story and really the most important relationship in your life? Because let's face it, you pick this person out of the other 7 billion on the planet to be the one. So isn't it worth putting a little time in and probably some money in too? Uh, you know, in 30 years, you're not going to care what it costs you to go to therapy if it ended up saving your marriage. So think about those things. Find a person that's a good fit for you. Read what you can. Do a little research. And ultimately, just call them up. Talk to them. Uh, you know, spend 5-10 minutes on the phone with them. Get a sense for who they are, their personality, if you think it'll be a good fit. And make sure they're committed to saving your relationship. As I know as a counselor that when people have one foot out the door almost never works out. So make sure that your counselor doesn't have one foot out the door. Okay, You don't want them to be thinking, well, I could save the relationship or I could be mediating, mediating their divorce. You want them bought into saving your relationship. So call them up, get a sense for who they are, and if they're committed to helping you save, salvage, and, and not just save, but also help thrive your relationship. So if you follow those, those ideas there, I think you'll probably be in good shape and, and keep that big picture perspective. It's about finding the right person. And I can tell you that just because someone charges a lot doesn't mean they're great. And just because someone charges a little doesn't mean that they're not good at all. Just because someone has a license or doesn't have a license doesn't mean they're a great therapist or a bad therapist. So find somebody that's a good fit for you that seems to have a good feel for your relationship and for you and your partner. All right, guys, take care. Um, check out the website. Give me a call. If, you're in, if your relationship's in trouble, I'd love to talk with you and see if there's something I can do to help. Uh, so go ahead and give me a call. All right, in the meantime, take care.